Welcome to Woodcast Stove Science. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the construction and the workings of tea luds. Uh, so a little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment, um, and that will be down below this video. If you like, or even if you don't like what I'm trying to do here, uh, it'll help my channel, um, and I really enjoy reading the comments, and I try to get back to everybody as soon as possible. Uh, so if you have any questions, please comment and ask the questions. Looking at a, um, the version 5.4 stove. Uh, here you can see a um, SketchUp model uh, that I made of a wood gas stove or a tea lud stove. Um, and this is kind of to help us describe uh, what, what is going on. A wood gas stove uh, is classified as a tea lud stove. And tea lud is the acronym for top lit updraft stoves. Most wood gas camp stoves you can build or buy have a very similar construction and work very similar fashion. They are usually built with an inner container which has a series of holes on the bottom which are called primary holes and a series of holes around the top edge which are called secondary holes. The can also has an outer container uh, that has holes around the bottom to allow fresh air in into the system. Uh, the distance between the inner and the outer can is uh, very important. Um, you want it close enough that the air within the two walls is going to get heated up very hot, but you also want, uh, don't want it so close uh, that it's going to restrict the flow. Uh, so there is a calculation um, that we can talk to in a uh, later video. Uh, so here I'm just showing you that um, the air can come in through the fresh air inlets and go through the primary holes and it can also go through the secondary holes once it's superheated. Uh, so here is sort of a cross-sectional model um, as we're zooming in now. This is showing the loading of, a, of the stove. Now the stove needs to be loaded um, very tightly with the fuel. Uh, there shouldn't be any extra space in there um, and it should always be lit from the top of the fuel charge. Uh, and this is something that a lot of people do incorrectly. Uh, they will load the stove partly up, they'll light it and then they'll finish loading it. And this is not the way that these stoves work. Uh, here you can see that it is being lit at the very top um, and it works like a regular um, fireplace at this point. The wood uh, the air is coming in through the sides and feeding the flames. Uh, fuel directly burning and uh, the stove is heating up and the air is coming in through the fresh air inlets and they're going up through the primary holes. And then we reach the paralysis, pyrolysis uh, phase where wood, wood gas generation starts and the gas rises and ignites at the secondary inlets and the paralysis zone is created. That pyrolysis front uh, moves down through the fuel and you can see at this point it's reached the bottom. Then there is a conversion from a pyrolysis phase to a char gasification phase where the wood gas uh, creation has stopped due, due to the fuel being fully converted um, and the gasification front stays at the bottom of the stove and starts uh, char gasification and that will produce blue flames like you saw in the video up in the corner and it consumes all of the char and leaves a tiny amount of ash that's left at the bottom uh, which is a comp just compounds in the wood that uh, cannot burn. So here I'm showing you the flow of air uh, through the wood gas stove and this is showing at light up so the f air is coming in through the fresh air inlets and it's going up through the fuel charge um, through the primary holes. As the stove heats up and that inner and outer container heats up, there's a chimney effect that starts pulling air up through the secondary holes. Um, at this point, the air is igniting um, at the, out of those secondary ports. Um, and uh, at this point, you will see flames shooting out of there. And there's a paralysis zone between those flames and uh, the fuel. Uh, now you're seeing um, where we're sort of uh, converting over to uh, char gasification. And in this case, we're in char gasification where most of the air is going up through the secondary ports. Um, and now we're going to uh, look at both of these videos uh, put together. Again, if you like what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, I would appreciate it. Uh, here we are in the lighting up phase uh, where the air is flowing in and 
through the primary holes and up through the gas. Uh, soon the air heats up inside those uh, between those chambers and the flame starts to be produced at the secondary ports. Um, the primary air rises up um, through the fuel and is broken down by the high temperatures in the pyrolysis zone and it mixes with the wood gas um, and becomes a very flammable wood gas. Um, at this point you can see the pyrolysis front is creeping down near the bottom and there's a heavy flow up through the secondary air holes and still the flow through the primary air holes. Um, now we're talking the conversion phase right here where the stove has started to convert over to burning charcoal. Um, now, if you have created a very well balanced, good burning stove, um, you won't get uh, optimized smoke and give off a nasty fume and sometimes will go out. Uh, but if you can convert to gasifying your charcoal, um, then you have a, a lot of heat left over. Uh, it'll continue to put out heat for another probably half an hour um, and you'll get good solid cooking heat. So I just want to recap a few things. Uh, so when wood is burning, uh, wood is mostly made up of carbon, hydrogen, and then there are some compounds uh, that don't burn. Uh, but during combustion, the air that comes in mixes with the carbon and the hydrogen to become a flammable gas, wood gas. Um, so then after you've started that combustion phase, it, we like to call it an ignition phase. During that ignition phase, fuel is directly burning, the stove is heating up, air is coming in through the fresh air inlets and moving up through the primary holes. The secondary air is heating up and the secondary air starts to ignite and the flames move up to the secondary air inlets. That is the beginning of the pyrolysis zone. Uh, during the pyrolysis phase, um, wood gas is generate, generated uh, from the high heat and the wood. Um, the wood is being broken down in that pyrolysis phase. Uh, the gas rises and ignites at the secondary inlets mixing with the air. So the air and the wood gas mixing together uh, ignites. The pyrolysis zone is created. That's the area between the flame and the fuel where all of those gases are being broken down and the pyrolysis front moves down through the fuel and continues towards the bottom of the can and the char builds up on top of that pyrolysis front. The primary air rise, rises and is broken down in the pyrolysis zone and mixes with the wood gas and becomes a flammable gas. Uh, once that pyrolysis zone has hit the bottom of the can and all of the wood has been consumed and changed into char, there is a switchover to char gasification phase. And in that char gasification phase is where a lot of stoves that aren't well optimized um, will stop, smoke, um, smother themselves, whatever. They just don't usually convert into that char, uh, charcoal gasification phase. But during that charcoal gasification phase, the wood gas creation is stopped due to all of the chemicals being fully converted in the pyrolysis phase. The gasification front stays at the bottom of the stove and starts the char gasification. That is where the blue flame is uh, created. And you saw that earlier in one of the videos, the blue flame that was coming off, and that was caused by char gasification. During that char gasification phase, um, it will consume all of the char and leave only a tiny amount of ash. And that ash is a compound in the wood that won't burn. Uh, so that's also where there could be some, um, some bad stuff like arsenic and things like that. So please uh, be careful when getting rid of that ash. Um, don't get it near your food. Uh, so that really... Um, concludes what I wanted to talk about today and hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully it wasn't too boring and slow for you guys uh, please comment and let me know if you like what you saw uh, and if you'd like more of this okay thank you goodbye